Welcome to Skill Session. Today, we're going to be installing everything that we need to do web development on a completely clean, brand new Windows 11 install. Now, if you're on Windows 10, doesn't matter. It's going to be the exact same thing. Let's get started. We want to install the Chrome browser, Visual Studio Code, PHP, and MySQL so we can do all the basic web stuff. Let's get into it. By default, we only have the Edge browser installed. And let's just search for Chrome, right? Chrome. Download Chrome. And we have it up here. Chrome setup. Yes, please. We have something back here. Yes, please. And here we have Chrome. And the reason we want to install Chrome is that Chrome is by far the most used browser in the world. So whenever you do web development, you want to test it on Chrome first, because that's where you have the most users. Now let's remove all this and look for Visual Studio Code. Now the reason we want to use Visual Studio Code is to get syntax highlighting. So we'll just click install. And it's the same one for all the Windowses. And it downloads right here. Beautiful. Let's set it up. I accept the agreement. Next, go, 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 just go. And we're done, let's just launch it. And here we go. Now what I like to do in Visual Studio Code is I like to create a workspace. So I'll open up my, uh, my finder here I'll find some folder. Let's go to the desktop and create a folder here called Workspace. I can drag that into Visual Studio Code. How awesome is that? Yes, I trust the author. I trust myself, kinda. And that means that this workspace over here, this is actually that folder. So that means now you can right click and say new file and we can call that code.html. So you couldn't do that before. If you went out here into Workspace, and you right clicked somewhere and said, oh, I want a new, uh, well, I suppose a text document, then you can't, you can't edit it. You can't call it uh, um, something .html. It'll still be a .txt file because it's hiding the file endings. Now, obviously you can change that, but it doesn't matter because even if you did change that, you would still open it in something like Notepad where you didn't have any syntax highlighting. So that's what we have right here. If I say, HTML, it's gonna automatically create the end tag and it's gonna show me a couple of different colors, right? So if I create a paragraph in here and I start uh, saying, hello world, then I can see that this is text and this is code because of the syntax highlighting. And I can do stuff like, like marking this and then hit the tab button and it'll automatically indent that. So now we can write code and we have syntax highlighting on, but we want to install some PHP, right? So let's go in here into our browser and say download PHP. And here we have php.net slash downloads.php. And we want just the latest stable version. You might want to have a, a version that's slightly older than the latest if you're working with some PHP software that's not compatible with the latest. Like WordPress is almost always one version behind, but we just want the latest one. So PHP 8.1. And we want the thread safe zip file. There we go. Now we have it here. Let's open it up. We'll go into downloads and it's right here. So I'll right click it and I'll say extract all. Now, where do I want to extract it? I might as well extract it to where I want it right away. So C colon backslash and then just PHP. I don't want all, all of it after it. C colon backslash PHP. Now I know Normally for all other applications, you'll want to install it in a different in a different place. PHP is special. What can I say? So put it directly on the C drive. And here we go. We have it in here. Everything is fine and dandy, but we can't start PHP right now. You know, normally you'd want to open up your command prompt and you'll type in something like PHP S localhost colon 8080. Hit enter. You can't do that. Why is that? Well, that's because you need to set the environment variable first. So hit the Windows key 
and type in environment variables. So edit the system environment variables. Let's go in there. Yes, I want to do it. In here, we have a button called environment variables. We click it in the bottom section called system variables. We'll want to find the one called path. And on the path, we'll want to click edit and we have a new pop-up. In here, we click new. And so we say C colon backslash PHP. And we hit OK, and we hit OK, and we hit OK. We need to go all the way out of this before it takes these changes into consideration. And even now, I can hit arrow up to get the latest command and then hit enter to run it. And it still won't work. Why is that? Well, the command prompt was loaded before this command existed in the environment variables. So I'll type exit. There we go. And then the next time I open it, it'll work. And I'll do that from the folder where I have my workspace. So we have that here, desktop workspace. That's the folder I want to work in. So when I'm in that folder, I can go up here into the address bar, click on it and write CMD. Now it'll open the command prompt, but in that folder, right? So use this desktop workspace. And in here I can say PHP dash S localhost colon 8080. Hit enter and PHP is running. Okay, that's great. Let's test it out real quick. I'll create a, um, a new file. I'll call it index.php because PHP is always looking for a file named index. And then here I'll say, hello world. That's gonna work no matter what, but then we're gonna add a little bit of PHP. Echo PHP. Woo. We'll save it. Let's jump into Chrome and write local host colon 8080. Enter. And it'll jump directly to that file because it's called index.php. Had we called it anything else, let's do that. Let's rename this to be called phptest.php. Now, if we go to localhost colon 8080, we won't get anything. We'll get this error message, but at least we can see that PHP is running, right? So let's say forward slash PHP test dot PHP, and it still works. And you can navigate down through folders that way. Okay, now we can develop PHP, but it's boring to develop PHP if we don't have a database. So let's install MariaDB. I'll hit a new uh, browser window here and say download, download Maria. DB. We want to uh, we want to get the latest version, not the alpha version. The latest the latest stable release, please. Here we go. Operating system, fine. Architecture is fine. And then we want an MSI package, Microsoft Installer package. Download. There we go. And once we have that downloaded, we can open it and start installing. I hit next. Accept, next, next. Now here I have a chance to enter a password. So you can either remove this and and the, the password will be blank. There will be a password, but it will be empty. Or you can click this and you can enter a password. I'll enter root here, root. And then I'll just say, I don't want to enable access from other computers, no. I'm just using this for personal development on this device. And I'll install as a service, enable networking, and the TCP port here is it's 3306 as standard, so keep it at that. Unless you have multiple database management systems running at once, which you probably shouldn't. So this is it. Next, and install. Yes. And hit finish. Now that that's installed, we should be able to connect to a database, more or less. So let's jump in here and connect to a database. So we're going to need a server name. That's going to be localhost. We're going to need a username. Well, that was root. We're going to need a password. 
we set that to be root as well. And then we're gonna need a database. And let's just call that MyDB, my database. Okay, so now we know what we wanna to connect to. We need to create a connection string. So I'll create a variable called connection. And I'll say, this is gonna be new PDO. There are three different ways to connect to your database from PHP. I generally use PDO for security reasons. PDO, parenthesis, semicolon. In here, we need our connection string, and then we need a username and a password. So let's go with the connection string. That's gonna be MySQL. So why is MySQL when we installed MariaDB? Well, MariaDB is a fork of MySQL, so that's why. MySQL colon host equals server name semicolon db name equals database. And then we want to include our username and our password. Okay, so that's great. Except, first of all, this is not gonna do anything, so we can't see if it works, and I can tell you right now that it doesn't. So, let's catch that, right? We'll say try, catch. And in the catch, we want to look at PDO exceptions. We'll call it exception. And then we'll say echo, database not connected, echo that exception. And then we'll echo that exception. And if it does work, we want to echo database connected. Yay, semicolon. So here we go. So this is fully functional code, right? We'll go over here, we'll refresh the page, and it's saying database not connected, PDO exception, couldn't find the driver. So we need to enable the PDO driver in the PHP initializer. Open our file explorer, and we'll go into C colon backslash PHP. In here, we have a bunch of files, and if I click on one of them and hit P on the keyboard, it'll go to the files that start with P. Here we have php.ini-development and dash production. Now we're gonna use this for development, so let's click that one. And I'll hit Control C, Control V to copy this file. And then I'll right click it and say rename, or you can hit F2, and I'll call it php.ini and just remove all of the copy and development and all that stuff, just php.ini. Yes, this is exactly what we wanna do despite the warning. Let's open this with Visual Studio Code. Open it. I'll hit Control F and I'll search for PDO. And we can see down here that we have an extension called PDO MySQL. That's what we want. Now this semicolon out here, that's how you write a comment in an INI file. So just remove that semicolon and the code becomes functional. See how the syntax highlighting is helping us out again here? So I'll hit Control S to save this and I'll jump right out. But wait, if we hit refresh right now, it still doesn't work. Why is that? Well, that's because the php.ini file is loaded when we start the PHP server. So let's go down here because our PHP server is still running right here. I'll hit Control C, that ended it. Hit arrow up to get the last command that I typed in. Hit enter, and I'm running the PHP server again. I'm going in here, hitting Control R, and now it's actually still not connected, but we have a different problem. The problem that we have right now is there's no database. There's no database called MyDB. If we search here, there's actually a new app that was installed along with the database because we installed it on Windows. It's called Heidi SQL. There's also an icon on the desktop for it. So if we open that, we can create a new session by clicking here, new, 
this DVD is unnamed, it's, it doesn't matter what it's called. And we can just say open. Now it doesn't work right now, it should. So if it works for you, keep it as it is. But since it doesn't work, I'll change this to libmysql.dll. Hit open. And now it has a different problem because I didn't type in a password. So I'll type in root and I'll say, okay. Settings were changed. Yes, I know. And we're in. So now we have the, da the databases that come pre-installed with the database management system. And if we go into query, we can say create database mydb, that's what we called it, semicolon, and then hit the play button. And we can see here that the code was run. And if we go back here, we refresh once again, control R, database connected, yay. So now we have everything set up. We can, we can develop code in Visual Studio code with, with syntax highlighting, we can create PHP, we can run a PHP server, and we can connect it to a database. Now, how do we use all that? That's for another video. We have the basics set up now. One more thing that I wanted to mention. Just a moment ago, I stopped the PHP server and started it again. That's only necessary when you change something in the php.ini file. I often see people stopping and starting that, that file over and over again every time they made a change in a, in a PHP file. You don't have to, it doesn't matter. It's an interpreted language, not a compiled language. So what that means is that every time that you load a page, the PHP server is gonna read through all of the code. So just make sure that you saved it and that you're looking at the files that you actually think you're looking at. So if you have two different copies of the same code on the hard drive, that's the problem that I see the most of my students, that they make changes to the code, but they don't work on the page because they make changes in a different copy of the files than they think they are. So you should be able to do some crazy and great web development right now with everything that you need. And that's all for this skill session.